Hey folks, Tim Miller here, and I wanted to talk to you real quick, like before we go into this crazy week ahead. And folks, let me just say it's going to be crazy. I mean, we're all listening to folks on different sides, and they're saying this candidate's going to win or this candidate's going to win. I want the values of America to win. I want our constitutional principles and foundational laws to continue. Why? Because they've uh, those things are what has brought us tremendous blessing as a nation. And so as we move into this uh, election period, I want to remind you, for those who have reached out to me and said, hey, what should I do about preparing for power or for home defense or for whatever? I want to remind you the journey continues. Folks, this journey does not stop. I believe, until the Lord comes back and sets everything right. What a day that'll be. But I wanted to talk to you today in this very politically charged environment and remind you that our country is changing and has changed forever. You see, when I was growing up, um, we had strong patriotism. It was just an absolute requirement. Nobody ever thought of denigrating the flag, uh, treasonous words against our country. Um, nobody ever thought of tearing down memorials um, that highlighted the struggle that we've gone through. And as a matter of fact, it really is shocking to me that this is where we are. Folks, I want you to take note, you probably could hear it, but in the act, uh, background of uh, our flag, America's flag, being pulled down at the U.S. Capitol, being trashed, in the background are those screaming, Alua Akbar, may God be great. You see, the problem with that is that that whole focus of effort uh, doesn't recognize the foundational principles of our nation, which, let me be clear, are a Judeo-Christian ethic. And I know people will go crazy over that. I don't care. I'm going to be a truth teller. You see, the, the fundamental issues that we're having now all go back to the, the condition of man's heart. And when we decide that thou shalt not murder doesn't matter anymore, that thou shalt not commit adultery doesn't matter anymore. We go down the list, we very quickly forget that it's those principles of living that have made our nation great because they were designed by the Creator. And I, I don't want this to be a sermon, but I want you to very clearly hear my heart. We are walking away from the God and from the principles of God that made us great as a nation. And that will cost us. It's just a matter of when. And it seems like it's already started now. Remember, folks, as we move into this post-election season, that mistrust, disinformation, uh, all kinds of silos now where venom and hatred and, and, and things can be said without account and actually inspire others to do crazy things, uh, you know, as we saw with two assassination attempts on President Trump. Obviously, um, those attempts were spurred up and encouraged through uh, what I believe is horrific um, groups and, and, and things going on on the Internet. So let me just get to what I wanted to talk to you about today, which is what happens after the election? How now shall we live? What things should we be thinking about to be wise and prepared? Because I know, in my experience, many of you feel nervous. You're not sure what to do. You're like, Tim, how do I get involved? And let me just remind you, all of us, we all have a part to play. And my hope and prayer is that you would you play your part, that you would say, I, I, I get a fair number. Of, I'm older. I, I can't physically defend myself. I can't do anything. 
let me remind you that whatever you speak out in terms of what you can or can't do is going to come true. In other words, if you say you can't, then likely you can't, you won't. If you say, no, wait, I can make a difference. I can do things today, which will help me get back into um, being, you know, part of the solution and not part of the problem. Because the problem is a lot of folks feel unheard. They feel like their voice doesn't matter. They feel like they can't make a difference. Let me remind you folks, standing against evil is everyone's responsibility. Yeah, you know, the, the famous quote couldn't be more true, that, that evil flourishes when good men and women do nothing. So with that said, let's talk about the chaos that's happening. Let's talk about some things we can do. Remember, folks, that this channel is all about equipping you to do things, to understand how to do things. And I hope and pray that this is helpful for you, especially in this season. By the way, as I've said many times, I have a fair number of followers, but many report back to me. They've been unsubscribed. They, they, they never are notified. So please do me a favor right now, like, share, subscribe. Make sure this gets out to everybody because I just want to help us as a nation uh, be stronger. And that starts with you and I being stronger. One person can make a, an incredible difference if, in fact, we know what to do. So let's start just on, on some things that I hope would be helpful. First of all, folks, we have to recognize that from now forward, because whatever happens in the election, hard times are coming. One side is going to get angry and the other side is going to get angry and pretty soon everybody's angry. And that's kind of um, the way it plays out. But I do want you to, to focus on identifying uh, potential flashpoints. Obviously, certain areas that you go are going to be more likely. They're going to be hot spots for problems to occur. And I encourage folks, if you're going to go some of these areas, downtown areas, especially city and state capitals, um, it, anywhere, basically, folks, where large groups of people can be, it's really important that you're doing your homework now. We're just not, you know, going through like, hey, let's go down and get an ice cream cone. If it's in the middle of a problem area, you got to think about that. So think about, identify, and avoid hot spots. Oftentimes, these are courthouses, uh, city halls. They're, they're, they're areas where protesters want to make a statement with that in the backdrop. Now, remember, folks, we saw this in 2020. When it happens, it happens quick. Let me be clear. This garbage about, well, this was a protest about that or that. That's just crazy. These are organized groups that are flying in from all over the country, and they are stirring stuff up. And they have, in, in many cases, they preposition uh, tools, I'll call it. Like, why would a pallet of bricks be in a place where there's no construction? Why would there be a big stack of um, handles, broom handles, and other things that could be used? Well, it's called prepositioning. We did it in the military all the time. You've got to have tools. So when you begin to go places and you see, why is that pallet of bricks there? Or what is that stuff? And you realize, wow, a crowd with that stuff could really be, um, you know, uh, equipped to do damage. Also, remember that many of the places that these things are going to pop up um, are, are going to be in areas where maybe the law enforcement response will not be overwhelming. What does that mean for you? If you get caught in one of these hot spots, you don't have a plan. You don't have the ability to navigate that place you're likely going to become either a victim or you're going to get caught up in things you don't want to. Remember, too, after the elections, um, during Election Day, polling stations and those kinds of places, just be wise and alert. If you see things, notify law enforcement because vote counting centers will likely be under a lot of media scrutiny. And that's, again, that's some place where someone could make a statement. But as you're alert, aware, you're paying attention, folks, if you see things start to escalate, especially if you've got a family, it's time to evacuate, exercise your security plan and get out of Dodge. And oh, by the way, this can happen in smaller towns, too. So it's really important that you are paying attention, alert, aware. And that's not just for big groups. It's also for uh, criminals and, and potential street crime. That's going to escalate as well. We've got a whole lot of folks in here that don't think that we're going to arrest them, put them in jail, 
And so they're kind of moving without consequences. Oh, by the way, that's true in a lot of our states now. Prosecutors will not prosecute uh, those that are victimizing American citizens. So pause, think about that. Is that the nation you want to live in? A place where judges don't prosecute violent criminals that are murdering and raping and doing things to uh, our citizens. So look for hot spots. Number two, we've got to be prepared. How many times have you heard me say, hey, you've got to be alert and aware? Well, one of the preparation things we must be aware of is what's going on. Therefore, you need to stay abreast of trusted news sources, not slanted, biased news sources. And there are Plenty of those on the right and the left, but find trusted news sources, folks that you believe will report accurately. There are some out there. I'm not going to suggest them to you because uh, our YouTube friends love to identify conservative uh, places like this, and they're not very favorable. But you do need good information. You need information from people that are going to relay facts, not biases. By the way, please, please, please hear me. There, With AI now, there's going to be stuff that comes out and it shocks you. And you're like, oh my goodness, what is that about? It's all permea er, prepared uh, based on lies. It, it, uh, the AI can generate any person saying anything and even give you videos. So folks, here's the point. We need to be wise. Rather than react and respond, we need to pause and say, okay, is this true? By the way, you can sign up for local alerts. Many um, jurisdictions will have local alerts that will just notify you of, of stuff that's going on. Seek out your local government and remember, stay tuned to trusted uh, stations. You know, one of the things I love, my friend Chuck Holden, he reports from all over the world. He's very clear on reporting the facts and giving you an honest assessment. So remember, staying up in, uh, uh, informed and alert. Also, folks, couldn't stress any, any more than I have. It is time for you to have a safety plan. You need to sit down with your family and you need to say, what would I do if there's a house fire in the house? Where are we going to meet? Walk out your kids to the mailbox or wherever you're going. Make sure that you've identified, hey, we do have smoke detectors. By the way, you should. We do have an emergency evacuation plan. We do have a home invasion plan. All those things, folks, matter, but this one really matters now. You need a plan with your family if you get separated that you all come back to a rally point. In other words, hey, if, if you've got teenage kids, you get separated in a crowd, there's a mass issue. Hey, just remember, we're going to meet right here at, at this place. If we can't meet here, then we're going to go to the next place. And so you identify a couple of places. Why two? So that if one happens to be caught in the mayhem, that you're able to get to the second one. Also, folks, please, please, please listen to me. Designate an emergency contact that's not with you and your family. It could be a family member that is, you know, maybe not even in the state, but they're a point of contact where if people can't get a hold of you, maybe your phone's down, maybe the cell system's down, that you'll be able to get to a place of communication. And remember, your kids have to memorize that number. It is possible that if you don't have your phone, you're not going to have the number to call. And that person is to be the point of contact. Hey, yes, I've heard from Tim. I've heard from Chuck. Everybody's good. So move to the following location. Remember, folks, communication networks invariably go down in the middle of major crisis situations. So having that emergency contact in place, knowing that you can reach out and that person will coordinate it. You have to memorize that number, though. And also, folks, in terms of preparation, remember we, we talked prepare during and after the incident. Stocking up on essentials. You've heard this from me until you can't take it anymore. You got to have three, three months plus of food. I recommend either Patriot's food or Wise food. Stuff that's stored, that it's sealed, it's good for whatever, 30 years. Um, you know, you get to 25 years and everything's great, you take it camping. But you've got to have food, water, shelter, 
meaning that if you live in a cold climate, you've got to have some way to heat your house. And then, folks, you got to have the ability to protect all those things. Because remember, it could be that if infrastructures are attacked, power grids are attacked, water filtration systems are attacked, we could go extended periods of time. You can't live too long without food, water, and shelter. And so the other thing you want to include in that is hygiene, uh, wet wipes, those kinds of things. Uh, but also, folks, remember medical equipment for my older folks. You need to have some level of stocked up medication because if you can't get to your blood pressure medication, medication over several weeks or even a month, you've got to have backup um, you know, emergency medicine uh, capability. Also, the stop the bleed, the tourniquets, the pressure bandages, all those things you might need. Um, and, and, and so do that now. I, I'm sure many of you have done it. Many that have watched my podcast have, have talked about that. And then, folks, once you know where the hot spots can be, especially in your region, you've got to make sure that you don't happen to stumble into them that you make an intentional plan. If, if you're, um, you know, curious about things, I just want to go watch, be careful things. I've been there. I've been outside of the White House when things just turn south just quick. And so remember, um, having the ability and the plan wherever you are, how do I get myself out of here? Remember the four questions I always talk about. Number one, wherever you go, watch what people are doing. If you see folks over in the corner and they're handing stuff out, it could be Houston, we have a problem. So always, wherever you go, shopping malls, wherever you go, restaurants, watch what people are doing. Number two, look for the exits, inside or out. You say, well, where are the exits? Outside. It could be an alley that you're going to run down. It, it, you've got to be able quickly to figure out an exit strategy. And it's interesting because research has shown that for those that identify a second and or third exit in a mass uh, crisis situation, their survival rate goes up to 80%. Identify that second exit. Number three, always look around you for cover and concealment. Folks that carry tools that are protective tools, they get this. Cover is something that hides you from observation in an act of violence event. Uh, um, I'm sorry, concealment is something that hides you from, from observation. Cover is something that protects you from prote potential rounds being fired. So where's the cover and concealment? And then number four, what's my plan to get myself and my family out of here? Folks, if you begin to ingrain that everywhere you go, you're going to be the family. You're going to be the person that knows what to do. So also remember defensive preparedness. I can't stress it enough. We've talked on the channel about simple strategies. Uh, my friend Matt Pascalini uh, on, on the YouTube channel, he, he teaches fundamental protection. Remember, folks, that you're not looking to fight, but you are looking to win if you're attacked. And simple things, why am I doing, what are you doing that for, Tim? Putting on your helmet. This is a fundamental principle that we teach folks all over that travel uh, for DOD. Uh, it's, it's part of what's called the SPEAR system with, with uh, Tony Blauer. If, if you just get on YouTube, you'll find some very interesting things. And remember, a basic self-defense course. I'm not talking about trying to be Bruce Lee, and I don't care how old you are. A basic self-defense course, just your ability to put your helmet on, we say, could stop that blow coming in that is designed to paralyze or, or knock you unconscious. So remember, fundamental self-defense training is really important. If someone comes into your house, you need that time of avoiding them, of protecting yourself to where you can get and do what you have to do. Uh, also remember that, you know, when, when we talk about medical supplies, first aid uh, gear is important, not just for you, but for your neighbors. And I would really challenge you folks, please, Think about how you can be a light in the middle of this darkness because you're wise and prepared. Maybe you order extra food. Maybe you have extra supplies. And, but it's you're prepared, which leads me to the last thing, and this is maybe the most important. Folks, it's time for us to come together as family, as Americans, the way that we've done in the past, 
and it's all about a community preparedness effort. You know, it's one of the most powerful tools that can happen when communities get together and they just say, hey, let's, how would we work together to survive if things begin going south? And folks, I, I don't think you have to convince your neighbors anymore. I think everybody gets it. Things are getting uh, darker in the U.S. And so what does that look like? Well, it looks like you just knocking on doors, introducing yourself. And, and you're not going, hey, well, you know, the world's coming to an end. It's kind of the obvious. It's, hey, you know, we all are kind of looking at what's going on. And, you know, the government's encouraging us. FEMA's encouraging us to be wise and prepared. And, and folks, let, let me just say, you'll know very quickly who, who you want in this group and who you don't. Um, but the good news is, is meeting your neighbors, working with them, identifying strengths and resources. Uh, maybe you have a neighbor that's in the medical field. Maybe you have a, a neighbor um, who has some level of electrical engineering or, uh, you know, plumbing or, or that kind of background. Folks, when things get bad, you need each other. And by the way, this is not just when things get bad, it used to be that all of us as Americans knew our neighbors. We all walked next door and had, you know, iced tea or a beer or whatever. And, and we just kind of looked out for each other. I cannot stress to you how important this is. If you begin to form community watch groups now, I call them community support groups. Folks, you're going to become exponentially safer, especially if you're an older person. You need those young people that can come to your assistance that will render aid. And by the way, when you're meeting with them, you're exchanging communications, you're getting their phone numbers, you're getting an idea of how would we communicate if the phones went down. And folks, you know, I know a lot of folks that are now getting into ham radio again, CB radios again, folks, the, all of that is just wise. And I wouldn't have said that 10 years ago. I would have said, oh, I think that's a little much. Not now. So do you have communications capability? Do you have the ability to help each other? And that's what community support groups are. And folks, remember in all of this, I know it can seem overwhelming, but I want to remind you that, you know, we, especially as people of faith, but even if you don't have a faith, I want you to know there's a lot of good in, in our world. There are a lot of good people who care about you, who want to help you. And, you know, I think the greatest tragedy in America today is the loss of hope. I was talking to a clinical psychiatrist, and he was explaining to me that the number one reason in the U.S. that people take their lives is they lose hope. Folks, we have hope. We are a great nation. Um, we still are. We've got a whole lot of problems, quite frankly, that if we don't go after it, we're, we're not going to be a great nation much longer. But let me just encourage you. You know, I, I, I talk to some people and they're just, you can tell in their spirit, they're panicked. Oh my goodness, they're fearful. And what am I going to do? One of the best things you can do, listen to me, the best thing you can do to avoid panic and fear is to have wisdom, preparation, and a calm mind. And when you do that, we train this all over the country. When you train your mind and body, when you are prepared, you are the person that just kind of goes into action in the midst of it. So the more you prepare, um, the less there is to fear. And that's just a reality. That's something that we practice in the military and in the Secret Service, especially in law enforcement. You've got to maintain a calm mindset. And folks, let me just encourage you. You need to focus on what you can control and let what you can't control go. If you take any other message, uh, if you take one message away from that, this, that, that would, from this podcast, this would be the message. Let go of what you can't control. Take ownership of what you can. Don't make rush decisions. I need to go buy this or buy that. Think about it. Work with people. There are a lot of good resources out here because, you know, quite frankly, maintaining a calm sense in a um, you know, a, a measured response with all that's going on, you're going to attract a lot of people who want to know, why are you calm? And I'm not. So folks, I hope this is helpful to you. I, I, I know I've thrown a lot of information at you, but I just really feel called in this season. Get the information out there. I will tell you what I'm telling you comes from my own experience and it's been 
time tested and put in practice. And I think we all need to hear it again. Again, please like, share, subscribe, uh, comment to me. Please give me your comments. Tell me what you need. Tell me how I can serve you um, because that's what all this is about. So I hope and pray that this is helpful. I hope and pray that you have a great um, season uh, with Thanksgiving and Christmas coming up. Um, we have a lot to be thankful for still in this country. So uh, God bless you. I'll see you next time. Please stay safe.